I'm Leslie Jufas of Trading Live Online and welcome to this short workshop on how to set up a simple trading routine on stock charts. I think trading routines are one of the really important tools that traders can build for themselves. For myself, my trading routine now, um, probably because I've been doing it for so long, I've got it scaled down where it really takes me a short amount of time. But what I do is I try and do it at the same time every day. For me, that's usually after the market close. When I work with traders, I generally ask them, do you have a routine? And they will tell me something like, well, I tend to get up at, you know, maybe 30 minutes before the market open. And then I kind of look to see what's happened in the overnight. And then I wait after the open and see what happens. Well, that's not quite what I mean by routine. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do in my routine, and I'm going to show you some things on stock charts that you can use to easily set up your own routine. So you can see on here, you know, at least four reasons. Um, we, we can come up with many more, um, but professional traders use a routine. Could you imagine, um, let's say you put a lot of money with with a money manager or a financial advisor, and they have no routine. And their routine is, well, I kind of show up a few minutes before the open, see what's happening. You know, that just, you would say, I'd like my money back, please. So you've got to think of yourself as your own um, money manager, professional money manager for your account. So the routines help you to identify the current market conditions, which is extremely important to know what type of market condition, to know what type of market condition you're trading in. Uh, and also, of course, to identify trading opportunities. But I think importantly, routines also um, help traders when they're off balance. There are going to be times in trading uh, with your trading that maybe things just aren't going right. You feel off balance um, and having a routine is kind of a way to recenter yourself. And also having a routine, I think it's just going to help improve your trading skills overall. So let's start with uh, what I do at the end of the trading day. I track very simple things. I'm going to use the, the SPY for an example today, but you should be able to transfer this to whatever asset that you trade and regardless of the time frame that you're trading. But what I do is I track the high and low prices um, of the day. So I want to find out what the range of the day is and also the time the high and low is made. So let's go to a chart and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, here's the chart of this of this spy. This is the ETF for the S and P 500. So my my feeling and one of my philosophies in trading is you can, if you can sort of get a handle on the major indexes first, and that's going to help you to then start scaling down if you trade ETFs or individual stocks to kind of get the pulse in the direction of the market. Are you bearish? Are you bullish. Um, maybe it's just in between in a neutral phase right now. So I'm going to go up here and uh, there's a little bar that you can click that says inspect. And that's going to bring up these cursor lines that show you the high and the low. So I want to go back here. I'll just go over here and we can see on this big bar right here, you can see, I can see the open the high, the low, and the close, and the volume if you use it, even though I don't track the volume on a daily basis. So I take just a regular, just a paper notebook. Yeah, I actually do this by, by hand, and I write down the date, and I look for uh, the range. And so here we've got a range of the low of 397 and a quarter, and a high of 408.61. So that gives us a range of 1136 on the SPY for that day. Now, here's what I, you know, look look for. So I mark in, I write down the high uh, and the low of the day, of uh, the close, the closing price, uh, the um, previous open, 
which would be actually the open of that day, but now we're looking into the next day. So that would be the previous open and also the previous close of the day. So um, these are important and I'll show you an example of why they're important. If we go over here to this section of the chart, you can see that after this move to the upside, the, the market then went into this consolidation period. And so you can see in here, you can see the range got small. Uh, it had a little gap to the downside, but closed up, but still below that. So my closing price here and my closing price here are very close together. So that tells me that there, there's some probably indecision. Uh, we're probably in some sort of contracting range. And then the next day, it's the same thing. You can see the close is uh, very close, almost the same as the close of this day. Uh, the low of this bar is very close to the close and the high of this bar. The next day it's followed by even smaller range. So the range is when they start contracting. There's, there's two phases, there's contracting and expanding. And so the expansion phases are gonna follow the contracting phases and vice versa. So this can give the trader clues to what the market might do next. When it goes into the contracting phase, it's a matter of time before it comes uh, out of it and it starts to expand again. So this range that we have here, we have a low, uh, we have a three and something point um, range on on this particular day. So we've come down quite a bit uh, from the range of the 11.36. Uh, uh, and so we're contracting uh, on here. Well, excuse me, not this bar, but uh, these bars here about the same thing. So you see expansion and then you see the ranges and the bars getting smaller. So that tells you that you know, eventually the market's going to have a larger move to the upside. It comes up here, it hits resistance, and it comes right back into these areas where all that contraction was happening. So if you're writing those um, numbers down every day, you're clearly going to see that this price level is a level that the market is sort of hovering around. And when you find that type of level, then you have to um, have the mindset that says, okay, price is gonna move away from that level eventually. And if you, um, if you combine using multiple time frames, uh, like I do, I think that's an extremely strong tool that you can start scaling down and looking for particular types of patterns that can help you when a breakout does come. Uh, in this case, the breakout happened to the upside. So a pretty uh, good move to the upside on that. So this one was about a, you know, two, three, four, five, about 14-ish to 15-ish point um, range. So nice, nice move up on that um, on that bar there. And then the market comes back down and look where it comes to, back down to that previous range. So that starts to tell you that you've got some important uh, support levels to be monitoring. So if you wrote that down again, your opens and closes in this area, you're going to see the market repeating that process and then you get the expansion up. And then once the market breaks the support level, you can kind of start that process all over again of waiting for it to go into that contracting phase. But it takes just a couple of minutes to write um, those types of numerals down. And along with it, when I see this, I'm also making notes on the price levels and uh, I'm writing down ranges of support and resistance as well. So that takes me all of maybe three or four minutes to do, but it gives me an extremely valuable set of information. Another part of my daily routine is tracking the direction. And so I want to write down if the market that day traded from a low to a high or a high to a low, or it stayed very neutral, such in the case of this little doji down here. When markets tend to 
trade in the same direction for several days, they will generally get some type of pause in, in that. Over here on this down move, we can see that it came down for one, uh, two, three, four, you know, five below there, close low here, six, seven days in a row. And that's not counting from the, the high to the low here as we had a little pause there. So that can <clears throat> tell you that the market may be ready to have some sort of um, move back in the opposite direction. So that is something else that I track and I simply track that from looking at you know down close, up close, and how many days the market traded either from high to low or from low to high. Now, I really love this dashboard and stock charts. This is something that is a quick go-to for me every single day. And you can get so much information um, that uh, can help you uh, building your routines and also for putting your finger on the pulse of the market for the day. So uh, this was uh, actually from the trading day, December 16th, 2022. And I'm just looking at the Dow Jones Industrial on the most active. And we can see on the most active list, everything is down this day. So if you're looking to go long and you see on the most active, you see across the board, you see um, all red, percent down is all red. The percent up uh, had a couple of um, up, a couple of uh, stocks that traded to the upside that day, but there weren't many overall. And so uh, some days on really strong down days, everything is red. Everything on most active is red. Everything on percent up is red. Um, the ones that are the least down will be at the top of the list. The ones at the most down will be at the bottom of the list. And same with the percent down, um, you're going to see the percent uh, changes uh, on those uh, as well. So that can give you just a quick pulse of the market. If you come in and you look at this and it's really mixed on the most active, your percent up is, you know, is uh, you've got percent up and percent down. You have a mixed day that you're working with. So that's the days you want to sort of be checking your support and resistance. And then over here, the VIX is really easy to check as well as other indexes. So now let's take a look at a few more things that are, are really easy to work into your routine. Over here on the left side, we've got the summary pages. And generally what I go straight to is the sector summary. So if I see something like a big down day or a big up day, I wanna go look at the sector summary. And uh, this might be at the end of the day because I wanna see who was the strongest that day, who was the weakest that day if it's a big down day. And so this will give you um, the, the list of the ETFs uh, in order of who was weakest or who was the strongest. And from there, you can scale down. So in this instance, on that down day, we were just looking at on the dashboard from December 16th, 2022, um, we can see communication services held up the best. So you can just click that and that's gonna give you quick access to looking at stocks that are the strongest. So when the market turns, then you might want to be uh, putting these onto into a list, um, which you can easily do in stock charts as well. And from here, you can just click on these and take a quick look uh, at the charts and see how see how they look. If you're a Stock Charts member, you can download some of these chart packs. This is David Keller's, and he's really got just about everything in here that um, you might want to take a look at uh, at the end of the day, and so you can do your preparation for the next day coming in. So he's got, I especially like the breadth indicators and the sentiment uh, indicators. He's got the U.S. 
um, sectors, the ETFs in here that you can quickly go through. And then of course, you can always make your own list of stocks. So for instance, I have a list here. I just have it titled defensive stocks. I've got 10 stocks uh, in here. You can see there's staples uh, in here. Uh, this is a dividend uh, ETF. So markets are really bearish. A lot of people are looking for dividend um, paying uh, stocks and ETFs. Uh, and so what you can do once you make a list like this is that the summary here, we're looking at this in the summary view here. So it gives us a lot of information. We can hover on that. We can take a quick glance. Now, if we want to sort of look at all of them at one time, I use this candle glance quite a bit. And so we can see easily, you know, we can see the Conagra brands. This is coming up to new highs. Uh, Colgate Palmolive is not. Uh, we can see strength in general meals. Uh, Walmart is not as close to those highs, not exceeding. So we can get a very quick uh, glance at what's happening. From there, one of the things I uh, like to take a look at also as I like to look at the correlations to the S&P, I want to know how strongly correlated are they to the S&P. So we can change that from 20 days, but as an example, over a 20-day period, this has a very high correlation, just below 100. And so this is telling us that this is very highly correlated to the S&P, SPX over the last 20 days. Um, and we can see, go down the list, and we can see Walmart has been uh, fairly highly correlated. Uh, we can see Lockheed Martin and the rest of these below are not as correlated or have not been as correlated over this period. So the high correlations mean that the asset is going to be moving with the S&P. So if the S&P has a, a move to the upside, likely that's going to be moving to the upside with it. Uh, and these ones with the low correlations are not likely to be moving as strongly in that same direction. So that can certainly help um, traders when they're planning trades. And once they have a uh, pulse of the market as I was uh, telling you about a few minutes ago. You know, as you can see, there's a number of things on here that you can just quickly click once you have um, a list. If you want to look at the charts uh, in full view and just kind of scroll down, then you would just click on the chart list and it's going to bring them all up and you can scroll right through them. Um, another thing that I like to use uh, is also the relative uh, rotation graph. And this can help uh, traders assess. I like to center it. Um, it's over a 10 week period. I usually move it a little bit in kind of I like to look over the last couple of weeks. This is going to tell you in these quadrants, if the stock is moving from leading to weakening, if it's in the lagging sector, is it moving from lagging to improving uh, into the leading sector and so on. So there's tutorials on stock charts about this, but again, it's a quick glance that can certainly help you um, determine strength or weakness in assets that you might be considering. Now to finish up here, I just want to tell you one more little tidbit that I look for in my in my routine. Um, and coming back to the chart of the SPY, now I'll look at some of these also on, and flip through smaller time frames um, because I can get a lot of information from that. Um, but one thing that I have found that's important um, to know about price behavior is that the higher the low of the price, the higher the low of the day is usually made within the first hour of the trading day. So if you are an intraday trader, you can certainly use that information to your benefit. And again, if you can determine that the market has been in some type of contracting phase and you're expecting the expansion, you see how the, even these bars here is traded low um, to high, low to high. Um, then we contracted again and traded low to high. So the market made um, the low uh, here early, early in the day. So I hope that you found uh, 
this information helpful. And if you don't have a routine, I hope this will inspire you to make uh, a new routine. Once again, I'm Leslie Jufless. Um, please visit me at Trading Live Online and uh, tell me about the routine that you've set up. Thanks for joining me. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.